Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher, and this is episode three of the series that I'm making on the little South Bend 7 inch shaper. As you know, I now have two of them, and the purpose of this video, part three, is to try to show you the differences between the two models. And there was a major change. I don't know how many of these were made over the years. It probably wasn't a lot, about, you know, two, three thousand or something like that in all. But at some point, they made the changes that I'm going to show you right now. I do know now that this one was made in 1956, possibly 55, and it was held over. But as I'm painting the cabinet, there is a date in there when the cabinet was made, 1956, April, so I'm sure that the shaper was made at about the same time. So now we've got that in mind, so the old one is somewhat uh, older, but we don't know how much, it might just be six months, who knows. But uh, let me show you, first of all, the serial numbers, and that might give you a little help. Uh, well, probably not, because it didn't help me. So let's take a look at the serial numbers, which are right here. I'll do a close-up of both of those. I may have said serial number, but I think I meant model number. And on the old one, it's 7S5B. I do not see a long serial number. If there is one, I haven't located it. And here's my new machine, SH95633-7S8B. As I was sanding down the cabinet, inside is clearly marked the date, April 1956. So now we really know about the time that this was built. And here are the two crankcase cover plates. You can see they are identical except the newer one has instructions regarding the type of oil to use in the sump. Earlier today I painted the cabinet including the drawers and I use Ace Hardware Machinery Gray. I know it is not the same as the, uh, the South Bend color but it's going to have to do. As you know, there are a hundred shades of gray, and I bought five different samples here, and this is the one that I'm using on the cabinet, and I probably will use this. Actually, no, probably about it. I'll be using this on the machine itself, and it is called smoke gray. I didn't realize it till today, but this drawer had the South Bend label on, but it had been painted over. It's a brass tag. I had a heck of a time trying to get it off. I, I did scratch it up a bit, but it's, it's better than it was. And it is marked uh, with the bench number. That must be the model number of the bench. But I'm glad to get that cleaned up, and I'll remount that. The most obvious difference between these two shapers is that the older model has a straight base casting. You see how that's just perfectly straight as opposed to the newer model where it flares out. It's a lot better looking, probably gives it a little bit more stability, but you can tell from across the room which model that uh, you uh, are looking at. This, they probably made many more of these over the years than they did uh, the straight ones, and I'm not sure the reason for that, but that went along with the oil sump, which I'm going to talk about momentarily. Well, now I'm going to tell you more than you want to know about these little shaper manuals, how to run a metalworking shaper. The bottom one here came with my older one. This one was sent to me in the mail, and this is the oil-soaked one that came with uh, my latest machine. But let's talk about the differences now on the copyright dates and all of that. You will notice on the older manual here that they're still using the old postal zone rather than the zip code which you see here. Also on the newer manuals they had been bought out by Amstead Industries so you can see that logo here. There's a number right here 
and it differs slightly from the number right here. So there are different editions of this. Also, they use the same picture on all three, but actually this is the old model shown on the cover. Because then when you open it up, you're going to see that there is the new model in, in these pictures. So they didn't bother to redo the cover. Well, who cares? The old one again is edition 2, 1953, which makes me think that the uh, machine was made in 1953 or slightly after that. And the copyright is 1952. And on this one, it's edition 3, 1954. They took the man's name off of there that had edited it. He must have died and they didn't care about him anymore. His name was Edwin Hamilton. And you can see a copyright there of, uh, of 66. So, the oil-soaked one is identical. You may not be able to read it, but we have a number here that ends with 56, but the oil-soaked one ends with 60. I'm sure I was wasting my time, but I put a piece of white paper between each page and I had the anvil on there overnight, actually a couple days, and quite a bit of oil came out, as you can see on all these sheets. I, I may do that now with a paper towel, a bounty only. Probably not worth bothering with. And this Mr. Beckman, I don't know if he was a teacher or why his name is on this. Looking on the side now of the one with the oil pump, you can see, I might have mentioned this in the last video, I don't remember, but right there there's an oil plug and we can put a quart of oil in there when it starts to run out of here, why then the oil level is correct. A screwdriver can be put into this hole to adjust the oil pump and let me show you on the other side. I think I showed this in the other video, but it deserves be shown again. So on this side you will see an oil plug and that will be used to drain the oil out and I showed you in the last one how filthy dirty the oil is. It may be the original oil, not sure. The tool slide on the new one is missing one screw. But actually it should be a screw like this to lock the gib and this is the one off of the other one, the other machine, and you can see it's a different size. And I did resize or check this thread, and it's a quarter 28. So they made these screws larger. There must have been a reason for that, so they could get them tighter, I guess. There may be other changes like that, insignificant changes that I am not aware of and I haven't noticed yet, and maybe never will. There are revisions made constantly when they make machinery or cars or whatever the product is. Improvements and sometimes they're just trying to make them cheaper, aren't they? As long I'm, as I'm showing you this view, remember the other day I took the vise off of here and there's a hole here to bolt it down and there's also a hole here on the side so you can bolt the vise to the side of this block. That's the reason that hole is so big. I'm not sure this is worth mentioning, but they're slightly different motors. They're both General Electric one-third horsepower, but this appears to be the newer design. This, this uh, just more cheaply made. Notice the difference in the end bells compared to the old one. They're both capacitor start. Both have 5H shafts. But it's very typical on any machine that they're buying motors, probably even on a contract or a bid, and they vary the size, and they're more concerned about the horsepower and the voltage and the size of the base, which is pretty well standard. So there, there will be changes often with motors. Sometimes they're manufactured by different companies. I saved the most important improvement uh, for last, and that is that this machine is equipped with an oil pump for automatic lubrication. 
Now if you look on the older one here, you're going to see there, there are get oilers, one, two, three, and there's three on the other side of the ram, and those need to be oiled fairly frequently. You don't want to run that dry, but is, there's a pump, oil pump in this machine, and a set of tubes, you know, that, that go to the ways, and uh, these are V's, as you or know, or dovetails, I should say. And then the little copper tubes in there go to other key points to, I think, the big bull gear, and I'm not sure what. I'll have this apart later on, and we can see that. So that's the main difference. Let me get a flashlight, and uh, we can look through the hole here and see the oil pump. Now there's dirty oil down there in the sump, but you can see the oil pump. And there's uh, tubing, we'll see that in the next video, so I'm not going to try to move the camera. It's so dark in there. One other difference, there's a little aluminum pan, I'm just going to call this a pan, and oil will drip on that and then run into that little hole to, to get down there and lubricate that uh, bronze sliding bushing. So that's pretty important, and it, it really looks like an add-on, but I, I think it's going to be highly effective. I did have it out of there, and that's why it's so clean. Well, that almost completes this video, and you know now the, uh, the differences between the two machines. And that concludes the video, other than I'm going to have a little extra credit right now and show you the parts list for the two different machines and just a couple changes and one of them of course will be the oil pump so let's take a look at the parts list and then that will be the end of the video thanks for watching now we're in extra credit these two little booklets here are quite different at the end the newer one has an extra page and they printed on the covers it's the same number of pages 24 but they needed another page to talk about the oil pump and the oil and all that, so that's all printed here. Also detailed instructions here on lubricating. Quite an improvement over what you see on this page. In addition, I have two South Bend catalogs. This was given to me by Ron Cox, and it's the 1952 catalog, South Bend, and then Someone sent me, I'm sorry, I don't have your name, the 1953, which is their anniversary edition catalog. And the reason I'm telling you this is that this one shows the older and the other one shows the newer shaper. So let's take a look at those. This is the 1952 catalog. No mention whatsoever made about oiling. It's got the straight base. I'll do some close-up pictures and I'll put them at the end. And this is the new catalog and they do show the oiling system right here. That's about the best picture I've seen of it. This is the parts list for the older model. Notice the shape of the base. It's the straight base. This is the parts list for the newer one. Notice the flared out improved base. Looks a lot prettier. Up in the corner here we have the oil pump and part 87 is that little tray that distributes the oil to the bronze bearing. This girl is on her way to the prom but she thought she'd stop by and look at a South Bend milling machine. <laughs>